All right, now simplifying square roots. You've been doing this since seventh grade. There you have. Uh, you did that last week. All right, now for number 96. <laughs> 16 times 6, which will give you 4 times the square root of 6. You need to break this down into a perfect square times another number. Well, you can do 8 times 12, but none of those are perfect squares. So the square root of 8, we don't know. The square root of 12, we don't know. But here, the square root of 16 times the square root of 6, the square root of 16 is 4, so it works out. Nope. All right, for number two, two times the square root of 36 times two. So what's the square root of 36? So you have two times six times the square root of two, which is 12 times the square root of two. Well, the square root of 2 never went anywhere. The square root of 2 doesn't go away. Just like the 2 in the front doesn't go away. You can't just have something disappear. The square root of 2 is not a perfect square. No. What two numbers that are the same can multiply to get to 2? None. That's adding. That's not multiplying. All right. Now, when you have a negative square root, the first thing we do is we take out an i, and it becomes square root of 80. So this is going to be i times the square root of 16 times 5. What's the square root of 16? 4. 4. So we're going to get 4i times the square root of 5. Now, we have a negative square root here for 32, so I'm going to bring that out. So I'll have 3i times the square root of 32. So now I have to make the square root into uh, my, a perfect square times another number, 16 times 2. So that's 16 times 2. What's the square root of 16? 4. four. So you have 3 times i times 4. One of the biggest mistakes I see is that 3 disappears, or when the i comes out, it disappears. It all has to stay. And then we have the square root of 2. Now, again, notice equal sign, equal sign. Every step starts with an equal sign. Every step of a new expression starts with an equal sign. If not, you're not doing it right, and I will be taking off points. That is what has to happen. That is mandatory. Then you need to start setting them up like this. Because this is what your final problem should look like. You're, you're probably doing the rough draft version, but I want to see this. I want to see this because this is what is expected of you. Neither one of those are perfect squares, though. See, you always have to have a perfect square times some other number. Well, then it's simplified. If it was like um, 51, 
you can't simplify that, so you keep it as square root of 51. So even though this is negative, um, you, you turn it into a positive? By taking out i. Because remember, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. All right, now, what's the value of x that makes this work? The square root of x has to equal 3 times the square root of 6. Now, in order to get rid of a square root, I've got to square that side, I've got to square this side, which means you square a square root, what do you get? x. You just Basically, you're going to distribute the square root of 2 to both sides in this case. So we'll get 3 squared times the square root of 6 squared, which is 9 times 6, so x is equal to 54. Oh yeah, you do have to. You're right. You do have to multiply that. Now, same thing with this one. We have an i in there, so what should we expect the number at whatever x is representing to be? Negative. negative. So when you see i, that usually tells us that there was a negative square root. So we take the square root of x, and we're going to square that, is equal to 4i times the square root of 3 squared. So we'll get x is equal to 4 squared times i squared times the square root of 3 quantity squared. So x is equal to 4 squared is 16 times i squared, which is negative 1, times the square root of 3 squared, which is 3. So x is equal to negative 3 times 16 is 48. All right, number seven, what's i squared equal to? Negative one. Yep. Nope. i squared, remember, is square root of negative one times the square root of negative one, which means it would be negative one. Just like saying the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is equal to 2. You're not gonna, we're not going to say it's equal to 4. But that's just one of, the, one of the things about i. We know i is equal to the square root of negative 1. And i squared is equal to negative 1. Those are two things, two laws that you need to know. All right, now when we're solving this, we're going to take the square root of both sides, but we're going to take a positive or negative square root of the 64. So x is going to be equal to a positive negative square root of 64. So we have to figure out 8 times what? 8 times 8. Well, I'll probably go 16 times 2. No, not 16 times 2. 16 times... Oh, wait. No, it's 8. It's just 8. I... Okay. When you see it the second time, your brain starts to go to jelly. All right. Now, this guy, add 7 to both sides. Solve for x squared. x squared is equal to 50. There's a lot of movement going on back there. And I can uh, narrow it down to about 3 people. And it's disrupting everything, so please stop. So now I'll take the, the square root of both sides. X is equal to a positive negative square root of 50. That's 25 times 2. So X is equal to positive and negative 5 times the square root of 2. Yeah, you need to keep it as a square root. You're not going to actually put it in a calculator and get 7 point something, something, something. 
you're going to simplify the radical. Then didn't we get a the same way? Or do we just like That's a perfect down, square. Because it was 8 times 8. That's yeah, it's a perfect square. So if it's a perfect square, it's going to be 8. But 50 is not a perfect square. This is not percussion class. All right, now we have subtract 30 from both sides. 7x is equal to negative 21. Divided by 7, or that's x squared. x squared is equal to negative 3. So x is going to be equal to positive negative square root of negative 3. We can take the square root of a negative number now because we know that one special imaginary number. So x is equal to positive or negative square root, or i times the square root of 3. So now negative numbers shouldn't scare us. It's just we take an i out and we do the same thing that we always do. All right, for number 10, or number 11, add 10 to both sides. Negative 10x squared is equal to 480. Divide by negative 10. x squared is going to be equal to, since we're dividing by 10, and that's a 0, it just goes away. That's negative 48. So in this case, x is going to be equal to a positive negative square root of negative 48. Negative tells us that x is going to... No, I want x. I don't want x squared. I want x. You always want x. You don't want any operations on the variable at all. You always want x equals. And in this case, x is going to equal two different numbers. We take that out and we get the square root of 48. So x is equal to positive negative i times the square root of 16 times 3. What's the square root of 16? So x is equal to positive negative 4i times the square root of 3. Can I, don't lean back in the chairs. Now for this one, subtract 3x from both sides. We want to get x squared, or subtract 3x squared from both sides. We want to get x squared all by itself. So we get 2x squared plus 12 is equal to negative 36. Subtract 12x, or sorry, subtract 12. You get 2x squared is equal to negative 48. Divide by 2 x squared is equal to negative 24. So what does that tell us x is going to be equal to? Negative 24. Now, we're going to bring out an i. And you're right, it's 4 times 6. That's the only perfect square that's going to divide into 24. Bring out the perfect square of 4, which is 2. So x is equal to a positive negative 2i radical 6. Plus and minus. Plus or minus the square root of negative 24. And i is equal to square root of negative 1. i squared is negative 1. Now, 14 and 15 and 16, we're just going to add like terms or subtract. Now, answer says in standard form. That means you're going to have your powers in decreasing order, like it's going to be 
something times x cubed plus something times x squared plus something times x plus a number, plus a constant. So standard form is always putting your variables in decreasing order. So we look for the biggest one first. In the problem, what's the biggest one? All right, the cubes. We have two of those. If we add those guys up, remember, put the equal sign there. What's 6 plus 3? 9x cubed. Now, the next one, we look for x squared. There's three of them. There's 5x squared, there's negative 8x squared, and there's negative 4x squared. So we need to take 5 minus 8, which is negative 3, and then negative 3 minus 4, which is negative 7. So that's negative 7x squared. And what's left over that I didn't highlight? Minus 12. Yeah, that, that's another way to do that. If you do that and say, all right, here are the x cubes, and then like here are the x squared, that's fine. Whatever, whatever works best, as long as you can organize it by the like terms. If you need to put them in parentheses, put them in parentheses. If you have two different color, three different color highlighters, go right ahead. Works for me. I'm not going to get bent out of shape over that. Um, order matters. In standard form, it has to go cubed squared if there was an x and then a number. So just make sure that when, it, when it's in standard form, you're going to go in decreasing order of power. All right. Now, since we're adding, and here, when you have binomials and the binomials are in parentheses, a lot of people want to start multiplying stuff. There's nothing to multiply here. It's just adding. So I need to add the x squares. So 3x squared plus 6x squared. 9x squared. And now I have the x's. 4 minus 8 there is negative 4x. And that's in standard form because it goes x squared and an x. Now, when you're subtracting, here's where you have to be really careful. This becomes 4x minus 7. Then I'm going to subtract a 6x. And then I'm going to subtract a negative 1. So that's plus 1. So... Be careful. So now in this case, you have 4 minus 6x. Then you have negative 7 plus 1, negative 6. And that's the first side. When you're subtracting a negative, it becomes positive.